my god, wait, rewind the tape. We're recording. <laughs> <laughs> so a solid intro again. Hey guys. Hi. We're back with Wait, Rewind the Tape, your favorite podcast for all things nonsensical. Yeah. And unstructured. 100%. And why are we even listening to this? Um, it's me, <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> and me, Ruth. Hello. And this week, we finally watched, or well, Ruth finally watched. <laughs> it's, it's a, a sin. sin. Yay. Um, I am really, I'm so... I've, oh my God, I've just realised. Yeah, but we're just getting so hype about the show. And then I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> thinking about what it's about I'm like yeah I know well oh gosh no but I'm only saying that because it was like I didn't expect it to be like I thought it was going to be a because okay when I first saw it I thought it was about a a show about like a group of friends who were queer yeah and I thought it was like a modern like skins type thing I was like that looks so fun (laughs) and then when you told me what it was about I was so confused I was like okay because I did hear it was a really good drama but I just thought it was like the drama of like what would come and then I also thought um then when I realized what it was about I thought it was gonna be really like somber but it's not it's like a joy it's still like, just it's, a, a about a group it's of a really good show queer friends in London in yeah, the really 80s at the height of a, the HIV epidemic but it um, is really about it, it's more about AIDS than anything else but it doesn't yeah absolutely it, it's sti- no that's not true I what I mean is like obviously that's the focus of the show because it's only five parts but it still gives you like a lot of like character development you see mm-hmm. how the relationships are like it's not um they're not defined by um no yeah no one's really ever defined by that illness but sometimes um or by no, or what I'm saying is by what's happening even in the context, it's still the, yeah, they still, like they family dynamics joy. and yeah, um, and it's like seeing somebody like for me, it's important like because I think that sometimes when you watch because we've talked a lot about like um, like poverty porn and it's a similar thing like as people mm-hmm. enjoy watching people suffer and sometimes when you're watching something that is about something serious, they take out the characters like joy and if you can't see those people's joys then they just become that thing and it kind of furthers the stere- this like false stereotype that mm-hmm. some people have when they're watching and they kind of enjoy watching people like suffer and be sad and in pain and it's like no you have to remember these are full vibrant amazing human beings who have a wonderful life mm-hmm. and then this is why it's so bad because you, through your own my brother is offering me a Fanta what kind orange I I asked for wine (laughs) and and he's like hey (laughs) no wine for you (laughs) I asked okay I said why would why would I ask for a she asked for Fanta, right? And <laughs> no, I gave no, the Fanta, no, no. and now it's a problem. Why? <laughs> Why? Yes, our first special guest. <laughs> you, asked, you literally said you wanted to And it's a family argument. <laughs> <laughs> he is had him. Nah. What did you say? <laughs> Don't worry, I wanted some rosé, but it's fine. Thank you. But I'll settle for Fanta. <laughs> I'll stay sober. Why does everyone want me sober now? I haven't had a drink in weeks. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I guess this is what we're doing now. Thank you. Not to be ungrateful. Thanks, Jonathan. God, I um, wish I could have a, a Fanta and parched. Um, okay, back to... <laughs> now I feel really bad. Because it's like, what? I've got a Fanta, a cold water, and a hot water. You know, I'm really... <laughs> living the got, dream. Yeah, all those liquids there. Those I can only babies. have... Uh, two sips or I'll need the loose so so it's all really just quite useless. which will I choose <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the hot water is gonna get cold and the cold yeah. water is gonna get tepid so you're just gonna end no, up I with do, I, the same yeah thing. I do love room temperature water so <laughs> that's I think that's what I really want <laughs> okay um oh. right let's take oh, yeah, it back sorry. 
to back to the it's, show. It's a sin. Yeah. Um, it, like when you see people's full characters, it shows like how outside bigotry is literally the reason for the suffering. People are not built to suffer. People aren't like having a terrible time in life, and then society. Um, is looking at them like oh you chose this for yourself that's literally the opposite of what happens people are having amazing beautiful existences yeah society decides they should not exist for whatever reason usually the same three things and then that group becomes their life is made a living hell like Mm -hmm. it's not but they still have the best time in spite of it yeah, Quite but it's all like that. It, it just shows that it's like you, it's it's so difficult to tr- like you. It's like you forget to thrive to even live when you don't have any a- access. Like if you don't have access to good healthcare, if that is one thing that is, it's just probably the biggest thing I think. Yeah, it should be a fundamental and right, and it's and it's. Uh, I do again. I was supposed to. Before we started this, I'm just going to lay it out all on the table, guys. Yeah. Before we started this podcast, Ruth and I admitted, as we knew would be the case, that all of that <laughs> research that we said we were going to do before we <laughs> did this episode because we we wanted to wait to do it justice. Did we do the research? Did we fuck? Absolutely not. No research whatsoever. Um, but I, and one of the I things I wanted Googles. to do, um, oh, that's good, more than I did. Um, I wanted to re-listen to um, a an episode of one of my favorite podcasts um, which I strongly urge people to listen to anyway um the episode and the podcast it's called this podcast will kill you and each week they center on a different kind of infectious disease and um they start with the um the physiology and the anatomy and all that kind of thing um to set the context of like what it actually does to your body, how you would get it, how it's transmitted, all that. And then they go on to talk about the um, the history of the disease and the like social history as well as just the history of how it came about. And um, and they have an episode about HIV and it's, it's um, really interesting and, and obviously inevitably heartbreaking too, because it is just, it's the, the way that the, disease played out and spread it did not need to happen that way let alone yeah. just the stigma it didn't it if you think about even the funding that HIV and AIDS receives compared to the funding that something like cystic fibrosis I think is the example that they give received um and the you know the way that people in rich people will have benefits and fundraisers for these kind of conditions that comparatively actually and again this is where I should have had the stats to back this up but comparatively the for the number of people that they affect it's just not the same it's so disproportionate because of who was affected by HIV and AIDS in the in the 80s that's the reason that is literally the reason why people were allowed to die and it is disgraceful it's not obviously the first case of uh something like this happening in the medical um history or in industry would i say that the sector in medicine it not at all like the history of modern medicine and western medicine is absolutely riddled with diabolical cases of racism and sexism and bigotry and people should be fucking aware of that people should know people when I say people I mean like the average person non, non yeah like non um non-black people slash white people non- should know what what the cost of modern health care and modern medical innovation has been to to black people to well anybody that's not white really yeah and that's isn't that's the, uh, the symbol itself is not Egyptian or am I wrong the snake in the sword 
let's not let's no anyway let go yeah from one. yeah i yeah. will we'll come back to it but there are like egyptian roots in modern medicine it like it doesn't matter now i just mean like it's just crazy that so much of what has helped get medicine to the point it is so many contributions and I'm not just talking about the forced contributions that have been Mm. made through experimentation on like non-white bodies but I mean so many of the um the bases of the science where it started was actually all made by uh non-white people as well Mm -hmm. and then it's just like you take it and you have the resources from trading in other people's human lives and goods and you develop it and then you're like we we made it yeah (laughs) sorry it's not funny because even like thinking about HIV is still isn't it the number one killer in South Africa am I just talking shit uh oh I don't know let me google it's research um I wouldn't yeah I wouldn't still a huge problem maybe not the number one killer and now especially it is it is not only preventable but it is treatable it is yeah. a, a condition that you can manage and that you can live with if you are given access to the correct um treatment plans and that's treatment plans to uh make if you are infected with the virus to make your viral load so low that you're not transmissible and also to protect you from actually contracting it in the first place yeah so that's only really available in uh i want to say europe and america but i could be wrong that i've i've heard used like freely and also so it must it can't be free in the states no no way yeah no way um i was gonna say the um I'm not I'm not gonna say anything I don't know because I'm just I don't like spreading any information. We do that enough. Exactly. Like do you remember I was saying that the uh uh, generic pharma company I worked for, they they uh replicated uh HIV medicine that made it really, really cheap to actually buy. Mm -hmm. So I think that is one of the developments that her could not just that company, but once they did it, like obviously other generic farmers. To make it these developments in medicine are spreading wider but the cr- the crazy thing is I cannot remember the full story so again I'm not going to tell you the full story you're going to have to google it guys that um a pharma company cured a man of HIV like three years ago and I've heard oh, nothing yeah. since yeah that is so true yeah in Germany right I can't remember where he was I just knew, I think he was mid, a middle-aged man. Yeah. And I'm just like, so, okay, if we take corona as an example of a health crisis that affects everyone, you can see, like, all systems ago, the world shut down, the world economy shut down. Every single pharma company got on the case. All the universities got on the case. And a vaccination has been developed. Fair enough, it's not a perfect vaccination. There are different vaccinations. But it just shows, like, it is possible. We can actually, if money is put into it, Mm -hmm. you can get any, you can get results. It's crazy. And I I know, obviously, every um, virus is different. But I just feel like even the fact that we'll all get vaccinated, because I'm talking about in the UK, I'm actually due to get my first corona vaccination tomorrow. How oh, long? Yay. Yeah, I know. That's why I have to get enough sleep tonight because I just think getting run, being going to a vaccination that causes illness run down is just the dumbest thing I probably Oh, ever I'm did. so jealous. Um, I just wish it was on Friday instead. It's not, I don't know. I'm, I'm so spoiled. I mean, like, I'm super grateful, but it's just not a good day for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, re- the, the reason I'm getting it is because my, co- I shouldn't say where my cousin works, but my cousin works for a, is it a charity? Yeah, it's a charity that helps, or what gives, I'm going to give it away. She works with uh, people who have refugee status, basically. So she's been working a lot during this time. Mm-hmm. And again I'm gonna sound so selfish I'm not doing the work I'm like but my health has also been at risk it's true because no but it's true because she has to go to work like there was a point in the house where I was like I'm living with two essential workers what is going on (laughs) but yeah because it's just because of that that uh, I get the vaccination early like so pretty much everyone's going to be vaccinated in this house I'm so happy 
That's, that's why really, um, yeah, my that's uh, my other brother's home. He's come home to get the vaccination. Nice. My 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 mum, my dad, and my brother have been vaccinated. Oh, <laughs> you look <laughs> what? You look so upset about. <laughs> No, I'm you happy. Um, um, no, no, um, you it was said more it. Like it just is trying to think about you. Uh, um, <laughs> like, because I was like, my brother, but then it's like, I have a half brother. And then it's like, don't get into it. It's fine. They're both your brothers. It doesn't matter. Then listeners don't care. It's not relevant. You don't have to go into the details of like, <laughs> who's related the, to who. The bloodline. <laughs> yeah. That, but I don't know. Like, obviously, I, I agree. I don't think there's any such thing as a half brother, but it's just like, when I like, so when I talk about my really little brothers, because they're so young, I feel yeah. like I have to qualify it by saying, "Oh, by the way." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Because um, it went the few times I haven't, people have made outrageous comments. I'm like, <laughs> is that how you would say that anyway? What, like your mum like, had a kid at eighteen? <laughs> oh, however. <laughs> don't let her hear this <laughs> oh. um yeah so one thing I did actually do but this was very much closer to the time of after I'd finished watching it because it was very fresh in my mind was ask yeah. my mum about um what her experience of um being a doctor was like in the 80s um especially because she it works in uh virology so this is like very this much is literally exactly what she's always done um yeah and she we should have got your mum on to do an interview maybe we should do that <laughs> somebody who um, knows what they're talking about that would be great <laughs> well the thing is because I was I, I was kind of thinking more you know I was like well did you encounter because on the show the show deals with a lot of um homophobia and a lot of stigma especially even yeah. within the medical profession um and a lot especially, of misinformation yeah. oh, no I don't say particularly especially um which is, again is why it's really difficult to watch because it's you're seeing people who have taken an oath to provide care regardless of who that person is and there they, there should be no um no bias when it comes to providing the best health care but of course yeah, right. it's bullshit um and even in the way that the doctor the gp talks to jill when she um is going for her a prescription for the pill I think and she's asking for some more this was a very early on in the um epidemic when it was still kind of mostly happening or at least seeming to mostly happen in the states and it was this scary thing that was happening in the states Jill who is the um the best friend of um Richie who's kind of one of the main protagonists she asks the, her doctor is there any more information and he's just outright kind of is like it's not it's not for you it's not about you why would you think that I would even know about that kind of thing it's like oh god like really dismissive and really um not even condescending like just really harsh and brutal to her and yeah you know, I will you why should you know about this because you are a GP in central London and it, this is something that is affecting people within your like whatever yeah. it is borough I don't know what, what's it called when you're I feel a- like you get that from, you do get that from a uh, GP sometimes where or, or you'll, you'll just want to know something and they'll kind of act like well you know you don't need to know that and it's just like <laughs> but what maybe I do want to know it yeah. I want to know Can't also you, you've got no, you know. or no idea why I'm asking you this I could be asking you because it's affecting somebody that I know because maybe it's actually affecting me like there's yeah. there's obviously a reason why I'm asking it. It's it's probably it's it's probably not because I'm just curious about something, especially in yeah. this day and age when you can Google stuff. Obviously, back then in the eighties you couldn't. But still, but- I prefer talking to a person. And if you read something or if you think you might have some misinformation, especially obviously you want a, a professional thing, to clear it up. And you are just exactly. at the doctors anyway. You're like, when am I next here? Might as well just ask. So I actually Here's thought the- she. <laughs> booked that appointment like pretending because she just wanted to know okay interesting Mm. fact random but Jill is actually the character Jill is based on the woman who plays Jill's mom oh yeah and she lost three of her best friends and that was just like 
I just also thought like uh, for me like you, you okay you have friends you have lots of friends but your best friends you probably have like a handful if that in your lifetime yeah and they're like the it's the same way I kind of feel about when people who lose their friends to like gang or gun violence I'm just like that's literally it's, all your childhood best friends or people that you love and have grown up with and especially in this show it's like people that you've you've literally been pushed out of your family and you found they are your family one. yeah and it's just like that that's your literal and we know life. how hard it is or not maybe not hard but the older you get the less you the less the fewer people that you meet and the less chance you are of making these kind of stronger connections or maybe you make the connections but obviously you're not having them for as you don't have as much of the same rich history as you do with people yeah and then you are being robbed of your future relationships and your future kind of personal development yeah that's why it was devastating really really got me and it's just like also, they were so young. Babies. So he, young. Like, I didn't realise, I don't know his name. I'm sorry I know him from this. I actually hate the show How I Met Your Mother, but he played Barney in that show. Oh, yes, yeah. Neil Patrick Harris. I didn't... Okay, am I being dumb? I was going to say I didn't realise he was British. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> I just like as soon as I went to say it, I was like, oh my god, he's literally an actor. He's <laughs> putting on a voice because that is his actual job. But he's wow. also he's brilliant in it. He's fantastic. He, I think he. I was going to say he steals the show, but I don't think he steals the show because well, he, he's, he's not. Yeah, he, he's supposed to. Like it's that's because you you're introduced. I'm sorry, but he's first of all. I know this is going to sound like I'm doing too much. But I know he was only on the screen for a short time, but that is honestly one of the best performances I've seen in a oh, long, I long, agree. long time. I agree. Totally. I thought exactly Phenomenal the same actor. thing. I Phenomenal actor. Know. The accent, the clipped British accent, just the, I mean... <laughs> the fact it, that I thought he was British. <laughs> he was brilliant. And just even that so that good. relationship with him and Colin, him like looking out for that Colin. That the sweetest and then, thing. Yeah. And then bringing in bringing Colin into his home showing him like kind of and I saving guess, Colin from abuse yeah um god that man is horrible that man um, is disgusting those despicable. men exist so many places and then the relationship gonna, yeah. that he had with his um partner the, the yeah. Portuguese guy that was just so beautiful also showing a younger generation that not only have they managed to survive but now they're coming to a point a turning point where obviously it's never there's a always a huge gap and I used to be so cynical I used to hate um quote-unquote moments like they used to drive me nuts when any oppressed group or people were having a moment it used to drive me crazy I'm sure you've witnessed it I used to hate it because I'm just like this isn't real but what now do you mean I'm by older. a moment, like a moment like, in time or life, or you mean when they were just on screen in having history, a moment together? Like, in oh. history, like for example, I'm trying to think, like oh, all the moments are really dark. I can't give any of my examples because they're all like something all happened because they're, they're they're born out of tragedy and oppression. Not always, born out like, of, don't you think? Like, oh well, maybe like I'm... some t- like some things like. Um, when David Cameron legalised gay marriage, and I hate David Cameron, and I was like, go to hell. Like, but even that, it is born, that. it's not, maybe not a tragedy, but it's still a moment is probably usually born out of a struggle of some sort. And even if the moment yeah. is something happy, it's happy because somebody's, like, not somebody, but people somebody have, have fought for, for it. And somebody else, yeah, like and it's women the people- getting the vote. It was a moment for women. Yeah, because we were oppressed for so long. Or like even this protest this sum- last summer, I'm still yeah. think it's 2020. It's just like, look what is happening. Like, I don't know, I just get so I I but now I honestly I think part of my personal development is I no longer feel that way. I now see like the historical relevance of his yeah. significance, yeah, of the, these moments, but also the beauty of the cynicism, not the beauty of the cynicism, but the knowing that in all of those moments that are sold to you, 
there were people who wanted more there at the time who that wasn't good enough for. And I don't know why, but that makes me feel so like, like you, you're nothing special or brand new. Like people have always been like, it just makes me feel like kind of like proud of any resistance that have ever happened. Like, I don't know, I'm doing too much. I'm getting emotional. Wow, what's going on? (laughs) whoa but all I was trying to say is that I'm sorry I don't know his name in the program I'm now going to refer to him as Patrick Neil Patrick Harris I can't remember what it's called Mystic not in the show uh the I I want to say it's like Mr Collins or something yes I think it was is it I think so yeah let me actually pull up the list because we usually have the list up because yeah. I'm so terrible. But he, he, I felt like him and his partner were like getting to a point where it's just like they'd found a way to live and be happy. Yeah, like and they, then it just they got had, snatched. Yeah, and it wasn't. I know it. It wasn't like that. All of these people were um, completely free in their lives, but like in a lot of ways, like a lot of it, they were about to be or they were about to find success despite it and they've I don't know they've found a way to well behind closed doors or in their own way when they got to be who they were they've had they found freedom in the people that they were with in the the love that they had with people and the acceptance that they had with people which is an acceptance and a love that most people living in outside in normality do not ever experience to that degree yeah and also they didn't have to change to the, each individual character, even the people who were hiding, they were t- tended to be the young ones. They didn't have to change too much, but like in, in death, like it was like, no, but that's this, in, in seeing people dying, it was like, no, but this is the real problem here. This is the real crux of all this hatred and homophobia. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that, your life is just not valued yeah by and that is so uh, yeah yeah but it's not to say that it isn't because do you know what really really actually made me so upset that I couldn't actually believe how upset I was do you remember the um the family okay I need to get names the family of the man that I cannot remember his name. He lived in a Richie. flat. Richie. Oh. Uh, and he was Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Gladys. Man. Gladys. Yes. When his oh. parents burnt everything that he yeah. had once he died. Just erased his, him. Just erased him. The pictures. Yeah. Because... Oh, that, that, give it to his family. Give it to, like, his actual family, his friends. You again, know, but you just, they... They never would even think to, and also like no, of course, but they would. Of course, it, it's not even that they wouldn't have thought to. It, it actually they is that they would have. They wouldn't have wanted to have it because they wanted to completely erase this their um their son, their brother's um existence, or or not. Well, maybe not the existence, but his queerness and his just like difference. his difference, and therefore his in their eyes his shame and his dirtiness which is really just yeah shame and that and was i'm glad they talked about the whole uh like the fact that people kept calling themselves clean day clean day clean day because obviously we've all it despite i don't think i really was by the time i was getting older like i was first introduced to hiv i remember when i was younger watching like the wider idea of what it is and how it's transmitted from watching that episode of girlfriends <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous that that's where I got my education from a television sitcom. Oh, I'm pretty sure I got mine from um, like ER or something. But also stuff like that, it's not like, but in ER it was pretty, um, I suppose, progressive in a way because they had um, one of the doctors was um, HIV positive. But I think I also just would have been aware of it because my parents never really um hid anything like that from us you know no ne- neither it's, did mine yeah. and it was when we were younger it was it was more openly talked about what I mean is like an education to the point where I knew that you had to drink you would ha- you would have to drink 10 liters of someone's saliva to co- contract HIV to know that like do you know what I mean like those, yeah like, the, the, yeah like kissing somebody with HIV is not gonna it's not 
that's not a trans not even, in a not even just those just like counter like things that I didn't think I needed to know because obviously at the time the show was made was a different it was probably a few years before I watched it probably like five years before girlfriend yeah like I feel like in the late 90s early 2000s that's when there was um more of a push to really destigmatize um HIV entirely I don't know if that was always the case and I'm just remembering that because that's how old I am and it was probably always like well because when you you see yeah show, when, like how when we were growing up was, we were already yeah. we already knew how it was transmitted and that was already being mm. um told to us that's how we were being educated I mean won't say that the stigma was taken away from it but it was more like well you're gonna get it if you have unprotected sex or if you have but there's still so much stigma we've talked about this before we've anything that's um sexually transmitted there's so much stigma mm-hmm. and any other I'm sure it's like something I realized this is a doctor John a few years ago like any other illness like you wouldn't shame someone because they got a cold <laughs> you wouldn't shame someone because they caught corona well, you but, wouldn't shame somebody if they got cancer you wouldn't shame somebody if no. they got something else that was terminal not at all but interesting you say that because I was um this was a while ago and I was reading someone who had cancers like uh, stories and stuff and they were talking about the idea that um you know how people think that like you can control with a healthy lifestyle you can control your health completely yeah. to the point where you'll never get ill and she was talking about that, trying to destroy that idea that you you either attract or you do something like you're deserving of your illnesses. Like anyone can get ill at any point. Human beings are actually mental. I'm sorry, yeah. we've gone so off topic just because humans are so crazy. Well, what we the original thing that I was going to say, and then we just really veered off it when we started talking about <laughs> doctors, was that I had asked I asked my mum about what her experience oh, of yes. um, yeah. HIV this. was when she was a young junior doctor, um, and did she re- did she experience anybody um, this really overt kind of sinister homophobia and, and unwillingness to even talk about? Um, HIV or, or treat it or whatever and in where she was up in the north actually the more of the focus was on this scandal um about uh infected factor eight so factor eight is um something I'm not sure what it, whether it's I don't think I'm not sure exactly what factor eight is but factor eight is basically it is a thing um I think it's a receptor that it, that we all have um and it's what helps your blood clot. So if you have a cut, then your factor eight is going to get to work and it's going to um, cause a clot so that then you don't like, bleed out in the most extreme cases. People with haemophilia um, do, don't produce factor eight or they don't have it or whatever it is. So they have to inject themselves with it. And in the 80s, um, the UK got most of its factor eight from overseas and I think a lot of it from the States. So they were buying stuff from the States that was infected, infected plasma, but they actually, when they found out about it, they didn't stop using it. They kept... Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, this isn't a myth. This is a real thing that This happened. is a real thing that happened. And of course, like, if you think about people, the demographics of people that have things like haemophilia or sexual cell anemia, again, it goes back to racism. I'm about to leave planet Earth. Sorry. I had not... Oh, my God. Because this is ringing a bell because I, not from adulthood, from childhood. Mm. This is ringing a bell. So, and of course it was all avoidable, totally avoidable. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm just reading here, um, Margaret Thatcher denied an investigation and so has every subsequent government since. But in 2017, Theresa May announced that the inquiry would actually be held, which that's nice of her. Um, but basically, people so were being infected with um, with HIV and Hep C. This is, do you know what stresses me out? This is why, oh, I can't even get into it. This isn't the platform. But this is just why there is so much fear of, like, 
hospitals. That is, do you know how mental that is? Yeah. Oh my god! It's, oh it's my god. totally, totally despicable. So, and I think that then this was before you could um, produce factorates synth- synthetically. So you were relying on donors, and in the states, because you, I'm not sure if it's still the case or if, but certainly back then, um, you would get paid for uh, donating blood. Um, yeah. So then, obviously, a lot of people. That that kind of that attracts people in high risk groups for viral risks, which include prisoners, um, sex workers, IV drug users. Um, I mean, it also, yeah. So, just people that are looking to make money. Now, I mean, I, that sounds like I'm saying it in a shady way. People I don't need mean to it to make talk money. People. Yeah, exactly. Because it's there there uh, that's literally the the only way the only avenue or legal avenue open to them but because of the, the way responsibility that lies with the, the with the medical professional. Like you obviously would test the blood. And this isn't and to anybody listening like this you've got to understand now we're living in a time where like we said you can um with effective treatment you wouldn't pass on hiv and also you can take medications to stop you from catching but at that time there still wasn't necessarily not everyone is you've got to understand even if loads of medicine is available not everyone has access to the same quality of medical care so if you're a more vulnerable person, you are still not as like I'm saying, like if that's not the case now, but you're still not as likely to get put on the same medication. So this is such a small, oh, I can't even bother to get into it for this yeah. example, but yeah. So it is, it's like a different time now. So maybe it's difficult to understand, but like, yeah. But then we still at the same time, I'm just don't want us to make it sound like we're, it's like, incre- it's not about it's increasing stigma, but it's also about like facing how apt, absolutely absurd and mental the situation is and how we do treat viruses in our society like what's going to happen and thinking about things intersectionally as well yeah yeah because you can't see these things in isolation when I when I saw the show I did think it was going to be like at first I thought it was going to be like um like a fun like I said like a fun show but I did think it was going to be like a very like whitewashed with non-white people type situation in it but I didn't when I was watching it to be honest I didn't really feel like that and it also felt very young and carefree which which I felt like was important because in a way you kind of want to you've got to understand like we we're just all of us we're just normal people like even if like a virus was to come and no one, if no one really understood it and there wasn't in- information readily available, we would just spread what we've heard about it. Some of us wouldn't even believe it existed. It's not like a we're living in that before. time now with all the information we have about Corona. Yeah, but with Corona, you can see like how it's been shoved down our throats. Like you cannot look out the window without seeing a sign like it's so <laughs> please wear a mask <laughs> yeah like it's not like there were signs everywhere but so, that's what I mean even with dog. that even with that there's still yeah. lots of misinformation and people yeah true. saying bullshit or oh not believing God, things like people literally dying yeah it's even with things being the information being so readily available the signs being everywhere that's still not enough for people so I mean, imagine what can, it's like when everything's yeah. hidden and you're told that it's it's all fine. It's just some like and flu. It's, it's and the government is so historically useless around the world. Like it's so useless that that is why people become conspiracy theorists because so many crazy things have actually happened. Yeah, that you kind of start thinking it could anything be true, is yeah. exactly. Yeah. And like as much as I get frustrated sometimes with some things that people believe that I know aren't true. I think of things that I thought could never happen. Like, have you ever had it happen where someone tells you a story and you're like, that sounds like a crazy conspiracy. And then it's actually real. And you're like, oh, okay. Like the one <laughs> I just told you <laughs> about contaminated factory. I thought, I thought that was a I thought that was a myth. Because I definitely remember something about needles and blood when I was young. God, the 90s was uh, yeah, it was yeah, nice. really uh anyway 
It was a great show. It was it's fantastic. I definitely urge you to watch it if you haven't already. 100%. Um I didn't fall in love with the main character, but I thought I wasn't supposed to. Like obviously fell in love with the black gay man. Who's not Oh my god. Parents. Um <laughs> what's he called? I can't remember. I can't remember anyone's name. I should look it up. I can't re- oh. Another great performance. Uh, was Reg- gr- I would were- say Reggie? No. Also, it was from the writer who wrote, have you seen Years and Years? Oh, you I couldn't know? watch it. You told me about it. I watched like one episode oh and then God. I just, it, I, I think I watched one episode. I was like, this is amazing. And then the second episode was so, so Close stressful. I just couldn't yeah. do it. I just couldn't do it. It is a stressful show. It's a really good show, but it's the same guy that wrote this show. Mm. Shocked. I Imagine having the CV like that. Mm. I tell you, I the character, Characters I loved. I loved Jill. I just thought she was brilliant. Yeah. I still loved her parents. I thought they were brilliant. They made me cry. Just the, the yeah, love. The best. Oh, the love my... and the acceptance. I cried at the acceptance. Wow. Yeah. Look, look at how me and Tanya <laughs> messed up. When I saw that scene where her, like, I just, when her mom and dad showed up for her at the protest. Oh my I God. Cried. Yeah, me too. That, yeah. Oh, it's nice. and at the it's, end yeah. when they're having dinner and they're like, yeah, um, I loved, I really, I liked Ash. I, I um, thought that he was a nice, a lovely character. I'm um, guessing that was the tall, beautiful man. Yeah, he was stunning. He was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. A knockout, one word. I mean, <laughs> but like the hair. The face, yeah. he was just so beautiful. Um, and I, 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 I know Richie, I, I don't think you're, you're not supposed to fall in love with him because he's a no, bit, he's I, a bit of a tosser. I, it's not that I let me not say it like that. I just mean like it. He was, he was. A, I still, he was still lovable. He was very lovable. He was like the life of the party. It's not like I don't mean it like that. I just mean like I. And then again, how often do I grow a really close affinity to the main character, except for in mm. maybe um, Insecure? Like, that's mm. like the only, the rest of yeah. them, I'm like, the main character's cool, but they're friends. <laughs> and I, uh, Colin. Colin, oh my God. Co- Colin was oh. unmentioned. Episode Colin's three. Mom. Colin's mum. Don't even get me started on Colin's mum. Again, the, the acceptance and the love there, and then just, and give it, even though she, the the struggles that she would have faced and that the nastiness that she would have received probably you know living on her own in Wales with yeah. um what Colin had to suffer through and that she just was like no fuck you all Colin's my Colin and there's nothing wrong with him it's yeah that was that was a lot um gosh oh my god even the agent you know the agent at the end when she gives um she gives Jill and uh, I wasn't happy with her I know I get it I got it I completely got it and I could also a little bit relate because I'm not always great in a super emotional <laughs> situations and I'll show up in every way I can and it might not be a conventional way but it is still important if that makes sense but I still wasn't loving like even when she said to him like you know when she was like there are a lot of boys going home don't go home I oh, guess yeah. that, that was like her trying to be like Please take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wish she'd just said that instead. <laughs> Even though it wouldn't have made a difference. I mean, I I, I, like, it wasn't, it was the bit at the end, just when she, when she was just crying, because obviously, again, for her, that's just the impact that it has on her. With so many people, so many young and boys. Generation and, gone. Yeah. And just not even, it's like, all around the world yeah just think about and think all of the the, the the richness the the creativity the all yeah. of the things that the world lost because a generation of young people were allowed to die it's not right um, it's still happening yeah exactly 
I mean, and I just think about the eighties was nuts. Okay, first of all, and I'm, to anybody listening, I'm not trying to glorify it. I, if you could see my face, I'm genuinely like, what WTF? The crack, the crack epidemic, HIV and AIDS, like those two things alone, Thatcherism, and Ronald Reagan at the same time. Count me out. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> no wonder the music popped. Something had to be good. There was a lot <laughs> going on. Oh God, no wonder the fashion was crazy and outrageous. The, yeah, no, people were going through it going through it I always thought it was like a time of like youth culture and rebellion and restructuring and like yeah different type of corporate greed and like a like the like kind of glamification of right wingness because <laughs> that's when like I feel like Reagan to me represents like if you compare a Reagan to a Nixon Reagan is so like differently marketed it's like he's like the smooth sexy do you know what I mean like yeah I was an type. actor I'm not a um I'm not a I'm not a regular president I'm a cool president, <laughs> cool president. I'm a sexy never, president but I'm so still many gonna... people like that there are still so many like people that you would never expect to be like a bit right wing because of who they, who they've been, who they've had to be in their own lives and what they've come through. But they try and find this way to make it like market it to you like it's just like cool, wow, capitalism. And I'm like, uh, no, keep it. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, well, no, share it. <laughs> Not the capitalism, the money. Well, the Bible says the violent take it by force. Look what Bible verses I remember. Wow. <laughs> Oh God! Um, this is what you get when you send me to Sunday school. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God! Yeah, I don't know the. I don't know what else to say about about the show apart from that it was, I think, fantastic, and it's it's it is a must watch show it's not you can't binge it and I am a binger for the gods and I just that's not something I could I binge. binge I really need I could I needed to take my time with it it was just really it was a that's lot that's another me. thing I don't know if this is because I'm a, not I don't know I also watch it like I, I when I watch that watching a good show I'm just like no I need this because it's like I mean you know same, I watch but... so many bad shows for weeks that it's, and also I've been Guys, I know I sound like a dick when I say this, but I've been really busy. And it's been, it was, that was the only time I had to like chill. And it was so nice <laughs> to not be working That's or fair. anything. Yeah. But I um, honestly, I also don't know how this sounds, but I didn't find it that heavy. The first episode almost took me out. So I had to watch the first episode and I was like, I need a break. But then I got into it. And then I actually know what am I talking about? The fifth was really difficult as well. The third? can't remember what happened in the third Colin but I can't yeah that's where it should have just stopped for me like the whole epidemic should have stopped oh yeah yeah just you like can it's, you guys, it's over it's like chill out like pharma can necessary. you I know, I know you've got the meds can you just like distribute them I know you're like, trying to make a quick buck but yeah, yeah let's be honest you're gonna make trillions anyway can we sit yeah just so many medicines oh my god we have so many medicines they're just behind a paywall mm. okay here are my list of things i don't think should be behind a paywall food mm. housing medicine any form of medical care i think i'm done i'm kind of like spirituality but i that one's a bit more sticky because no i know but i just feel like you should be able to just go and enjoy and access and not even, even if you're like, it doesn't matter what religion you are, like you should be able to access your things safely, free from bigotry. And yeah. okay, I don't mean to be controversial, but let's just say, I don't think it's controversial. Let's just say for whatever reason, I am recording. <laughs> Guys, come here for my brother and mother. We really have a full house today. <laughs> it's usually my cat and my dog. <laughs> So, where where are they? Um, don't uh, my girls probably start barking ahead? I've seen Brody's um in a in a little basket over there. Well, Brody's again he's on the table by now. He, yeah, exactly. 
actually it's pretty early by our standards true we would normally yeah. be starting now <laughs> the listeners don't need to hear the logistics of I this. love telling them I'm God. like this is how the sausage is made <laughs> like, okay. yeah we're taking we're drawing back the curtain on the illusion <laughs> we're making illusion. you part of the magic <laughs> Oh my God, Jonathan, my brother. So to anybody who doesn't know, my brother Jonathan is 10 years younger than me, if not 11. So when he was born, I was 11. <laughs> yeah, 11. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly 11. <laughs> I'm like, three. No, 11. He was born when I was 11. So that makes him six years younger than me. <laughs> oh my God, what am I doing? He was te- he, when we went to Disneyland, like obviously I was... 16 and I don't know how old that makes him because I can't count. So he was like 12. No, he was five. <laughs> <laughs> he was 19. <laughs> so as you can guess, we get there and like we just didn't expect it. He, he grew up on, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Playhouse Disney because it wasn't a thing when we were young. Well, oh I my didn't God, it have was... Disney, the Disney Channel or any of that shit. It was so different to even just the Disney Channel. To be honest, I found the Disney Channel extremely boring as a child, except for the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I mean, what did they have? What Which was? Is, what oh are you talking about? You never watched the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Why would I watch the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh? Because it's a brilliant show. Me and Jonathan were watching it the other day, and we were laughing. It's so Listen, funny. I don't make a habit <laughs> of watching. Uh, Okay, did Cartoon. you watch that uh, show about the Little Mermaid, but the TV version? No. What are you we talking didn't have about? A child, man. <laughs> That's not real, man. <laughs> we didn't get to watch stuff like that. Like no, but that was on ITV. I'm sure we didn't get to watch stuff like this. Like That's we, what we used to watch at the childminders. That was lit. It, it wasn't <laughs> like. We just, we weren't ever at home in time for any of the cartoons after school. And I know we watched that at Kay's house. On a Saturday uh, or Sunday, well, Sunday morning, we would have been going to church and a Saturday morning, (laughs) we weren't allowed to watch TV. (laughs) Yeah. It was like, we have breakfast as a family and you then, yeah, do your chores. Well, that's fair. I just mean like, what did you do at the childminders? We didn't. Really, we didn't have a childminder. We didn't go to a childminder. What did we? Okay. We were at late room during the week. We didn't do that till we were a bit older. So when we were really uh, young, like reception year one, we had the best childminder called Kane, and we used to go to Kay's and we'd um, play games. It was like we, I would play teacher because I'm a psychopath and everyone would hate it. <laughs> We'd play PlayStation, we'd play Tekken, which is the best game of all time, at me. I'm ready to fight about it. And then we'd, like, watch that Little Mermaid show, which I didn't actually love that much, but just the time, like, that we'd all sit together. I feel like there was 100 kids there. There was probably four of us. (laughs) (laughs) Number's not your strong point today. (laughs) Because I couldn't, I'm thinking about it. I know me and my brother were there and Sean was there. Sean was Kay's son. So they actually couldn't, and maybe sometimes the neighbor would come over because he went to school with us as well. There couldn't have been more than five of us there because I definitely remember there being someone who wasn't related to me or them. But yeah, I'm just pulling up the number. Yeah, but it was just like a nice, it was just a nice moment. Yeah. And sometimes we'd have those really cheap oven burgers. Oh yeah, I know the ones like really chewy. Yeah, so the, the sound of this little mermaid reminds me of <laughs> it's like <laughs> Oh, just the sound of the Little Mermaid, not the sound of people jumping on. That's <laughs> funny because that is still how I chew to this. <laughs> like just like I grew up in a bar. I love it. Oh, um, I can't even remember. God, I don't know how about. we got onto that topic. Oh, okay. Because Jonathan, basically, back to Disneyland. When he said when he right. got to Disneyland, the reason he started screaming was because in his mind him and mickey were like cool because he was like but if this if this is like disney magic like me and mickey like mickey you know how santa just Mickey's knows gonna know you. me yeah <laughs> so when he got them it was strangers and i think one of the people dressed up was like gave him a hand as if to say i'm on a break and he what? Just, <laughs> are you sure it wasn't like a high five 
in his chair. And you're like so he's got right. a, a fag in like a big hand, and he's like, okay, just pipe down. But it probably was like it, a high five. He's like his mind. He's just like, why are you telling I like me to that go in away? his mind? That's what he equates the hand to. Just like, no, 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 no. Just, just leave me alone. like go go somewhere else, please. That's literally an impression of me when I was twelve. So yeah. <laughs> And then he was like, and then the size thing threw him because when he met Buzz Lightyear, that was a moment I'll never forget. He, <laughs> he loved Buzz Lightyear and he met Buzz Lightyear and he was screaming and crying and Buzz was trying to say hello. And Jonathan started running away. <laughs> so like, Jonathan's running away. Screaming from Buzz and crying Lightyear. in fear. Yeah, he was terrified, but I couldn't right. stop laughing because it was so big. What? How big did he expect him? Did he think it would be a toy? No, he thought, he was, his he was size. talking about it and he was just like, just, he just couldn't, he didn't understand why they were all so big. <laughs> I guess when you are a five-year-old, they're pretty, big. an adult, a regular adult's pretty big, but then when you factor in the big old suit, yeah, fair enough. No, but I just, I just will never forget it. And I know I'm a sicko for laughing. Maybe we should have comforted him because... It was just the last thing we expected. Obviously, when mum's like organized this trip for him, like she wanted to see his like face and he means yeah. Buzz Lightyear, and he just starts yeah. screaming. So it turns <laughs> out it was a lot more fun for the rest of you guys. <laughs> yeah, Disneyland's not bad actually. It's not oh, that yeah. much to do, but yeah, I like it. I've never been yeah. to Disney World though. I really want to go. Where which one's Disneyland? I've been to Disney World. Paris. Oh, mm-hmm. I haven't been to Disneyland. Oh. Yeah, you went to the big league. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And I've never been to Universal either. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. See, your childhood was amazing. You might not have had the little mermaid, but you had the real little mermaid. I mean, yeah, we did We did get have some good trips. But then all the trips that we had... Oh, God, this makes me sound so fucking bratty because we had some <laughs> great trips. But it was there was always, like, the educational element to it as well. Don't try and teach me at freaking Universal, please. Don't Just let make me... me don't make me do a project prior to going on holiday. <laughs> one of the projects we had to do, one one trip we went to, I think it was it was New York, New York, Boston, and Philadelphia. And before the trip, I mm-hmm. had to do a project, not like like a full binder project on the American Civil War. Not the Civil War. Civil War, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because obviously we're going to, like, the uh, to Philadelphia. We're going to see the Liberty Bell, all this shit. The Freedom Trail in Boston. I don't believe in all that stuff. But, yeah. Well, like it's Santa. I I don't believe it happened. (laughs) That's not what I mean. (laughs) I just mean Um, it's severely overhyped, like the French Revolution. um, Yeah, and it was, I mean... That was just one of the projects. I can't actually remember what some of the other ones were. But... The Civil War. Oh, yeah. my God. How old are you? Sorry, not the Civil War. The Revolutionary War. Mm. Isn't that the Civil War? No, it's not. I the thought Revolutionary... that was the same thing. No. <laughs> the <laughs> Revolutionary <laughs> War is um, much earlier, and that's the against the British, the Redcoats. Okay. The Civil War is like the North and the South. The war for independence, not yeah. the war for the independence of black people who actually live in the country. But that's yeah, not what yeah. they tell you it's about. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it about It is the slavery. law it to have your own, to steal the land from the indigenous people and have your own, and bring your own slaves Yeah, from the British. It was that war. Oh my God, so cute. Mm, yeah. It's like, oh, let me not get into it. Why am I silencing myself today? Wow. I think it's because I'm tired and I'm worried about what's going to fly in my mouth. The moon is yeah, so beautiful fair. tonight. Oh, is that the moon or is that a reflection? No, it's the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Natalie, please tell me why. There was, okay, fair enough, I didn't have my glasses on, mm-hmm. so take it with a pinch of salt. There is, like, a thing down the road. It's like a communal, like, walkthrough thing. It's not a park. It's near the canal. It's a really nice chilled spot if you just want some peace. hmm I saw what looked like a bonfire. And I'm like, right. there is no way someone has started a bonfire there. Why? Like, even if I went to a local park and someone had started a bonfire, I would think they were nuts. 
this is tiny. This is like, <laughs> this is the smallest thing by the canal. Why would you like start a campfire? Bonfire? Yeah, and I'm just like, but it looked huge. And then I was like, there was no way that could be what it is. So maybe it's a projection. Like their watch, like, and then I was like, because it, it just looked like, what could that be? That just looks like, I was like, maybe they put up like a big tent and it's just the light looks funny. So I think I'm looking at a bonfire. But then also that doesn't make any sense either. But anyway, I just wanted to say that because I'm just like, guys, I know you can't get out to the camps or whatever. Like you can't go to the camping fields, but you cannot just use a patch of <laughs> random grass <laughs> for your freaking bonfire. First of all, Okay, maybe they don't have a garden. I was going to say do it in your garden because there are a lot of flats around here, so maybe they don't have a garden. There are bigger parks around here. You can't also, do that. Also, well, I don't, I don't think it's legal, that. and I know that it's we shouldn't always right. fall back on the things yeah, that are laws. legal and the laws. Some laws make sense. Um, but, yeah, just maybe you don't, don't have an open fire. Oh, my it's God. Not appropriate. The other thing that's driving me nuts is... Okay, it hasn't happened in a while, but during, like, I started to notice, since I've been home full time, I started to notice people do it a lot. People still burn things in my back garden. Mm. Like, it drives me mental. You cannot do that. You can't just set things on fire. Like, oh, I don't need these. And it's sometimes I'm like, are you burning tires? I it don't smells need these toxic. plastic clothes anymore. <laughs> Just gonna yeah. set them on fire. I'm gonna and put I'm, back into the environment. And I do think there are a few people around here who are a bit like um what's the polite way to say like climate um, deniers, climate change deniers. <laughs> oh, hundred percent, but that's not what I meant. Um, okay. um a bit like not hickey. Uh like people, I know what you mean. Uh, like um like townie, townies? like I don't know the word townie, for it. yeah. Like a I'm bit like, chaff. oh, I'm gonna yeah, no offensive, but t- no, like yeah, gonna, I've got a, like a really old like pickup truck. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it's cool that you like. I know like where I know like walking routes without a map. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of person. I would go to a public place, forest, a public forest, and just cut some wood. <laughs> So very much not a townie. That is a townie to me, like a bit hippie. Is it? Like you, you live is in it? like a, a small town near the country, but you're way too modern for the country folk. But you're okay. Still, so you're and you're not evolved enough. So you're like the worst, <laughs> but the I'm worst of both. Enough. No, I just mean like if you really are of of the land, like you don't harm it. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, you leave it as you find it type yeah, thing. Yeah, because you literally are always there anyway and you just kind of start to realise, yeah. okay, I can't mess this up too much. I know I exactly what you mean. wreak havoc wherever they go, but they still are way more, like, they're probably, if if <laughs> if the civilization ended today, like, they would make it. I know what you mean. But, yeah, I'm sick of those people and they're freaking setting fires. And even when I was in Nigeria, nobody cares, but... My cousin lives near someone who does that. And from one room in her house, we could see over and she would go <laughs> nuts. <laughs> There's nothing you can do because like that that person who's setting some fire, stuff on fire in their backyard, it was like wood and stuff. But they have like a pretty large space to do it in and it's still driving the neighbours crazy. We live so close to each other we don't have massive plots of land why are you burning things yeah. in that garden anyway enough is enough I'll stop that's and all I have to say massively made me forget what I was gonna say <laughs> slash ask but never mind oh my God. No, it'll come to me in the important. middle of the night um I can't yeah I really can't remember um I did however start watching Wonderland no what not Wonderland uh, uh, WandaVision WandaVision yeah please can we do a WandaVision episode yeah sure what episode are you on I want to say eight episode eight how many are there oh my god there's only nine yeah I'm pretty sure I'm like (laughs) at the end yeah I think there's only nine let me check I keep saying I'm gonna look stuff up and I haven't looked thing up yet Oh, did you know that the oldest recorded disease is um, hepatitis B? Um, and it when it was it back in the day, it it caused an absolute um, 
Havoc. It's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say a tizzy, but I couldn't remember what the word was. There were nine episodes in one division, so you're practically finished. I want to just do like a part two of just (laughs) (laughs) what right now is absolutely brilliant. I, yeah, I I think it's great. Hmm. Um, but maybe, maybe next week, although we do have a new agenda kind of that we thought we were going to follow. Oh, fuck that one division. <laughs> one division. And then we can go back to normal. Because then we can, so to anybody who doesn't know, obviously Natalie has three full-time, no, two full-time clients and one part-time. So that's like two and a half jobs, right? Yeah, one of them, that is true. But one of the, one of the contracts I feel like is now one and a half contracts and then the other one that was a full-time one is I'm just winding that down mostly because my other one is just taking over so much is the other one better or it's just it's the it's my main one so I have to prioritize it and it's just okay there's lots to do so overall I've got three different clients and I'm probably working like 10 to 12 hours a day not including the weekends but there is work to be done at the weekends because I, I never get through everything during the week you can't so. it's too much it's not possible and also I just can't my cat does not sleep through the night because he's kind of nocturnal and during the day, I can't do enough with him to to get him active and get him tired out. So he sleeps all day. And then at night, he just goes mental. And so I get I just get very little sleep. No, I can't do it. That's one thing I can't go without. Everything yeah. you're saying sounds like hell. Like working 12 hours is a lot. I know. But yeah. then every single day consistently for months. But yeah. not sleeping on top of that. Now I'm killing somebody. Yeah, it's a lot. It is not. I'm not. I can't lie. It's a lot. But it's it's fine, and it's not forever. Um, I think that I think this is what I was going to say, but I can't be sure. So obviously, um, it's uh, what date is it? It we've just had our lockdown restrictions in the UK. So oh, yeah. obviously, as of Monday, the 12th of April everybody's going absolutely mad in um Brixton anyway the on Monday the streets overfloweth with people drinking because we've down the road from me like super close is a pub with a massive beer garden so it's one garden. of the oh it's huge hmm. it's really really big um and that's so you can only go to places that have outdoor space so it's just it's just going crazy. And we've actually in Lambeth, they're seeing record numbers of um, the, I don't like saying strains that come from a particular place because I feel like it increases. Just extra strains. Yeah, there's a particularly virulent strain. Um, that, How many strains do we have? Is it three? No, there's good, there'll be hundreds. There'll be so many strains. It's just the reason why we can detect strains in the UK is because we have genome testing. And not all countries do that. So that's why we, there's this, you know, the UK strain. It's like, well, no, it's just a strain that we happen to pick up here because we're actually testing for variations. Um, But I think that they, yeah, there are possibly main, some three main ones that we have named and called out. Anyway, we've, in Lambeth is now seeing rising cases of one particular strain, Oh, and so you just 9.0. like well yeah, exactly i'm like people why are you just going it's not it's not people's fault it's not like this is gonna keep happening we all know the cycle i think we should yeah. just accept it <laughs> no no that's so bad as a person being vaccinated tomorrow <laughs> only half a vaccination 
But <sighs> also, I think I'm going to, if I can stay awake, I think I'm actually going to go to a pub on Friday night. Obviously, knowing me, I'm going to go to an empty, empty pub and sit in the farthest corner because I'm not playing. Well, you can't you sit inside, right? No, no, no. Yeah, it's all I outside. mean, the farthest corner of the, like, I can imagine there's a whatever. street in uh, Birmingham that has a pub, but it's like a main, main street. I mean, you're not usually allowed to just wander off with your drink, yeah. but who's going to stop me? I am not sitting with anyone. So I may actually go, but I don't know if I can actually go on Friday evening because I'll be so tired. I've decided to re-record things that I shouldn't have. <laughs> and now you've, re- you've started the process. You're like, fuck. No, no, one finish of them it. is... One of them is finished. There's one more bit of the song I'd like to re-record, but I'm praying that I can let it go because I've realised I'm not in control of myself. Like, there is something (laughs) else moving me. Like, I'm not making decisions. Because when I start doing something, maybe... Um, Like, I'll be be working on a spreadsheet, I've noticed, and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to start in an hour. And then I'm there for three hours, and I'm just like, this is not me. Something else has taken over that's like... That is so obsessive and is so particular and has to get everything done. And that's definitely not my vibe. So I'm like, I wish is it not? that energy. No. <laughs> no, I am laid back and cool. <laughs> oh, no, so you've never got anyway. obsessive about anything, any process. Or... I, uh, no, I am chilled out <laughs> I go with the flow. <laughs> I, I am the flow. <laughs> Literally the dam trying to hold back for <laughs> Yeah, very much so. Like, I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> no, I know. I need to learn to chill out. But I just think it's weird. I'm like, I don't know if, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know if it's a trained behavior, but I'm just learning to like let that side of me just do whatever it wants. And like, I'll just jump in when I can have fun. Wow, I should probably <laughs> stop speaking. Like, I need to go to bed. This is not healthy. But yeah, I'm just like, who is that? And can she do some other things in my life? That are probably she, yeah, just do something. Yeah, do the things that are a bit more <laughs> productive for us rather than just this. No, like there is, I've realized also there's no, there nothing is productive because like, I when you put in hours on working like on paid work you feel like you've wasted your life and when you put your hours into unpaid work you feel like you've wasted your life the only thing that you really enjoy is not working (laughs) oh my god honestly I can't wait I really can't wait for the summer at this rate it'll be the end of summer yeah we're going to have when I can just not oh yes I'm just like that woman in my head is sure. like, who's paying for it who's paying for it Ruth I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, like, you're paying you for it bitch that's Jesus. why you're working <laughs> good luck that's why you do those spreadsheets bitch have fun I'm gonna be listening to podcasts <laughs> oh my yeah God. no that'll be that'll be fun I wonder if we need to book no we'll just do a last minute thing won't we yeah, like who's also are we gonna get into this situation where everyone in the UK gets vaccinated and then carries corona to every corner of the world because they can still get it and they don't wear a mask and they just give it to everyone and then leave and then the whole world is oh my god, random. Sorry, I can't finish a thought. I still because uh, listeners, you knew where that Lisa. thought was going. <laughs> fill in the Nowhere. fill in the blank yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Answers on a postcard. <laughs> That never will arrive. Uh, A digital postcard. No one's having my address. (laughs) Remember when digital birthday cards were a thing? (laughs) I feel like I still received them. Remember all my loves me. (laughs) No, I think it's like my brother will send one where you open it and it's all it's like the crayon thing or something. Yeah. Yeah. They were so good. I used to get like that was like my main. Oh my god, I used to love stuff like that. Okay. Look what made me happy. Shout out to was it Yahoo? No, I don't know. Mm-hmm. What happened to Yahoo? Because now I feel like they're a right wing publication that barely has an email. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. What were you gonna say? Oh, Who knows? Japan. Japan right. were protesting. I'm like, why are they protesting? Because I had no idea. Because it just seems weird. Because I always feel like, well, in my lifetime, I've never known there to be a large protest in Japan on the news like literally ever in my lifetime but maybe because I don't watch the news enough 
but or it's just not people, covered on yeah exactly yeah. but people are protesting because uh coronavirus numbers are surging and the government's like but the olympics is still happening and people are like <laughs> no olympics and the fuck that like, yeah i think i think we like, need it <laughs> we already postponed it from 2020 which by the way we had the best logo ever <laughs> It was really quite smashing. The, the I want to see it. Oh my god! It's it's so simple. It's so brilliant. Obviously, because of, it incorporates the, the flag in the circles, and because there were three zeros, <gasps> right? That's cute as hell. Oh, it's so remember? good. But they must have, you know, how fucked off would you be if you? I mean, obviously, there are bigger things to worry about. But you've just designed like one of the <laughs> best Olympic logos ever, and that year they postpone the olympics the unthinkable happens i mean it depends how the rest of my life is going okay i don't love this logo i don't wait it's it's cute the old one or the new one i'm looking at the new one is it um, oh no i don't love the new one (laughs) oh no (laughs) seen how they scribbled <laughs> there's one picture where they put tokyo 20 20 and then they've scribbled out with red pen obviously it's not red <laughs> pen so I'm not i have seen that and put a one out oh, that's hilarious okay oh, well oh my god and there's another one where somebody has made the olympic rings into <laughs> the coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of fun oh dear people are like yeah, i've never known someone to have to like uh any humans have to protest like this much for common sense things like people i know that all protests are for common, it's sense, for common things. sense things for basic human <laughs> rights what am i talking about <laughs> common decency that's literally every protest every protest is like stop doing this ridiculous terrible thing and the government's like no nah. <laughs> listen i don't know what to tell you this is how i make my money okay yeah (laughs) tyranny (laughs) oh my god oh god uh man alive anyway have you i was gonna say have you been we we didn't do the usual preamble so maybe we can do it and oh my god i found out i'm a narcissist and i actually wanted you to take (laughs) i wanted you to take the test oh fuck is it a quick test? I mean... Like, is it a, can oh we do gosh. it now test or should I just do I it like in the comfort of my own home? Yeah, it's a quick test, but I feel like I should send it to you and then we should talk about our results next week because I'm okay. really irritated by some of the questions. I will give you one question as an example mm-hmm. because this one was really like, doesn't everyone feel like that? It says... First of all, I scored 27 out of 40, which I thought was a good result. And it turns out the threshold for severe narcissistic tendencies was 26. (laughs) (laughs) Severe? Is there a threshold? What's the threshold below that for just like regular tendencies? Or is that the the bit? No, there's minimal, 0 to 10, mild, 11 to 16, strong, 17 to 25, (laughs) and severe, 26 to 40. (laughs) That's not a lot, though. I mean, as in, like, 26 to 40, I feel like is... There's there's still a lot of points there where you could be a, a bigger narcissist, exactly. you know, if you're at the Way lower bigger. end of that. Um, Severe is so dramatic. Yeah. I think we need to interrogate who made this bloody quiz. Well, they are trying to sell me therapy, but there are way worse things to sell. You know what I mean? Like, this, the whole... Um, I think it's like an minddiagnostics.org there's loads of tests i'm going to take them all and write down all the terrible things they all are. the things that we are yeah but the first okay. question is it's not if they're all true or false it's nice when people notice that i've made an effort to look good how are you who's saying that, false how is that narcissistic it's true of course it's nice also it's unfair <laughs> because as women we're conditioned to be always thinking about our appearance and putting effort into our appearance as society yeah. that's not our fucking fault 
But there is an argument that we live in a society that breeds narcissists. That's why we're so... No, it's breeding insecurity, sweetie. It's not narcissism. (laughs) Maybe you thinking you know better than the quiz is a sign of (laughs) your Okay. No, but that's how it makes you feel. By the end, I was like, I'm like, I'm fuck you. Control. I'm like, I am a narcissist. Go to no, But it's not fair to be like, yeah, do you it do you feel good when somebody like thinks that you've made made an effort to look good or you look good? No, I feel I mean, insecure when feel- somebody <laughs> when somebody tells me. But narcissism is based on insecurity. Yes, I watched a Red yeah, Table true, Talk. True, 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 I need true, to start. True, true, true. We need to do an episode on Red Table Talk, honestly. There are so many ridiculous Red Table Talks. Um, <laughs> yes, it is yeah, my favourite I haven't, show. I haven't ever watched it. Oh, my God, you're in for a treat. Some of them are really serious. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that I find the narcissism, epi- narcissism episodes, the light-hearted ones, they look really funny. <laughs> No, they're not. <laughs> it is a really good show. I enjoy it. Some of sometimes I feel like they're a bit off and a bit messy, but because they everyone is like they're like well, I was gonna say they're normal people, but they're not, are they at all? They're but they're celebs. I just mean I mean they're not just celebs, they're the Smiths. They're like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The celebs. The Smiths. <laughs> yeah, like the famous people. <laughs> I feel like at this point I'm like sometimes I'm like what do they do and then I'm like yes that's how they that's how they made their fortune because they seem so much larger than what they do do you know what I mean yeah Anywho. um well you know we love a quiz so send yeah, it my way and I will yes. try not to tell you what my result was until next week okay and please keep screenshots or just keep the page loaded on your phone so we can go through and compare questions. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm sad. Okay. Um, yeah, next week, we'll, uh, the preamble will be, how much of a narcissist am I compared to Ruth? <laughs> Why don't you guys tell us, put those answers on a postcard, because I do not want to know the answers. <laughs> it's the most narcissistic. Oh, my God. Should we do a poll? <gasps> yes. Should we do a Facebook yeah, but- poll? No one will answer that. Except for me, I'll be like, uh, Natalie. <laughs> no, I know people for sure that will say me because they know no. me. I don't know. But I'm not, I don't say they know me and therefore they know I'm an artist because they'll they'll want to like Oh, go, because they'll yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I we're not gonna, they're not a trustable poll. Well, oh, I just think people are too scared to tell me I'm a narcissist. That's why I think I'm a narcissist. <laughs> That's how you know. That's one of the questions. Would, would people be scared? If people thought you were a narcissist, would they Would they even tell you? Absolutely no. But Hell yeah, no. Yeah, being in lockdown definitely made me realise that all those behaviours that I were put on to me that I hated, I've definitely <laughs> absorbed and become some of those. Oh, I have as well. And I, yeah. Which I we hate. Have, we were, had a very st- strong narcissistic presence in both of you. Well, I won't speak for you, but certainly in my life. Um, I've had, yeah, I've had a speckled. Oh, my speckled. God. I was I grew I mean, up I've also with... had yeah. What are you saying? I'm drinking the Fanta, by the way, after all that. <laughs> yeah. We're almost done, so you can run off air if you need the toilet. I yeah, I had a a, a little strong influence of a narcissistic person in my I thought life. you were gonna say of the narcissistic persuasion. I was like, it's not thing because I kind of like the sound of it and then I'm like that's not good no that's the caption for the poll who's of the who's of the highest narcissistic persuasion (laughs) no we should not be making fun of this it's it's not um narcissism is truly um a it's horrible horrible and, and I believe it's probably horrible for the in some well and apart from if you're so far gone that you build yourself a the biggest uh delusions of grandeur around your existence but it's it's not a nice thing to come into contact with and it's a very serious thing yeah for the for the person in question 
it can't be nice for them either because on some level no that's how I know you're not a narcissist because that is mental I'm like forget that and push them off a cliff (laughs) obviously not anybody listening do not push a person you love off a cliff please you are not Janine or anybody don't push anybody off a cliff look (laughs) it's not worth it it's not worth it what the prison time all the the having it on your conscience the haunting it's just not worth it I am a narcissist didn't even cross my mind (laughs) I am a mental case I'm like it's not worth the haunting (laughs) you'll never get over it (laughs) no but you won't you actually won't you won't you've killed somebody (laughs) yeah because oh my god I was gonna say people who have killed people always bring it up but this is (laughs) Of all, we've yeah, this <laughs> is taken a real turn. Oh um, my gosh! Also, if you, oh god, I don't mean obviously. Oh, obviously, taking life is never good. It's never right. good. I'm not making light of it. I'm just saying that we, as a society, we put people in situations where they have to. It's nuts. Even in the army, anyway. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, really, really I've said enough. That. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm never listening to this episode. Um, oh, this is the one episode that I probably will listen to. Yeah, the soundtrack was. Oh, yeah. Time. Also, I started making a playlist and I'm trying to pick one song from each of the episodes that best sums up the episode. Wow, that's a lot of work. But that's I really I started cute. it the other week at like 1 a.m. And you've got one song and it's Kissy. <laughs> no, I've, I've, got, I've got like. Four songs for each episode because I couldn't narrow it down. Disney. And I was like, how? No. There must be a lot of Drake. No, never. I haven't done season two. It's like, I, that's oh. the thing. I, that's why I didn't progress because season two is so easy because it's like shows. Right. Like, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Season one, I was trying to be clever. Then I was like, but this song, this song, like, there's that song, uh, you know, the film uh, Nasty that we watched because she's I supposed do, to be like yeah. a gold digger. So yeah. I wanted to do Madonna, Material Girl. But then a okay. rapper called um, Saucy Santana also has a song called Material Girl and his is way more fun and more of a bop. But more people will know Madonna's. And I'm just like, yeah. Which one should I choose? And then I end up with four songs, and I'm like, wow. Then I'm like, Kanye West Gold Digger. And I'm like, no, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Why are you uh, doing this? Then I'm, I'm like, to this uh, playlist. I, it probably won't be good because knowing me, like this, well, I'll pick loads of good it's songs. It's gonna and then be I'll feel really, the really weirdly diverse, but also not diverse <laughs> at all in terms of like genres or whatever. Like it, it's gonna be both if no, that's it, even possible. It, it's, it's a mess. Yeah, that is. It's like my taste in music. It's like the most random music, but it feels like it's all the same song. Like my summer 2021 playlist is like, I'm like, oh, I'm just like, I just want this song made by every single person. That's like, oh, yeah. Do you use Spotify? Yeah. Oh my God, I might send you a draft. Because, yeah, I am. A draft with a playlist. You guys want to Yeah, this is what I do. Absolutely not. We won't even publish I it. really want to. Oh my god! I was like, "What's it called?" Obviously, it's called "Wait, Rewind the Tape." Oh my god! What? So all of my play, I deleted the music off my uh, laptop to save space. Right. But now, every time I click on a playlist, except for one, all of the songs are gone. So I can see that the play the playlist exists, but I'm just like, but the songs aren't in it. Like I can see the pictures of all the songs on the main thing. Oh, but no. only the fact that these are the two songs I've downloaded. Like one of them is from Disenchanted, which I've never oh, yeah. even seen the musical. And it musical. It's Bi- what is it? Not a musical. Well, the the cartoon on musical. Netflix. Oh. No, Enchanted is the, is the musical. I thought Disenchanted came from the stage, and it's Disen- about um uh. Like is it Disney not that, fairy tale characters? That's enchanted. No, no, but oh, that is a great film. I really enjoyed oh, it. Really I know good, it wasn't yeah. for everyone. I loved it. I think I saw it in the cinema. <laughs> but it's also got J- what? What? <laughs> Sorry, but that is a weird film to watch at the cinema because it's like <laughs> what we were just a bit too old to be going to see at the cinema, but not, but you not old enough we to were. be like, but not old enough for it to be ironic or it will never be. Ironic. <laughs> 
It's not just a kid's film. No, I think there was just, like, just... not a lot out at the cinema at the time, probably. And it was a time where I was just going to the cinema a lot. I can't wait to go to the cinema. I, I literally cannot wait. I miss it so much. It's the best place. Yeah. Having yeah. a little sip of red wine in the cinema, getting drunk and then just laughing <laughs> things at yourself. But then being like, shit, I need the toilet. <laughs> I need the lay right now. I'm just thinking that. That's why I don't go. Yeah, that's why I don't go to the cinema because as soon as you get there, you need the lay. Well, it's usually okay if, because when I go, if I go on my own, I'll usually be going to see a film that no one else wants to see or that it it's just quite, it's been on for a while. So there's it's usually quite an empty uh, oh, screen. Apart from when I went to go and see Little Women, and I'm mm-hmm. sure I've told you the story before and I'm sure on the podcast even, and I, the only seat left to buy was on the end, but the end yeah. against a wall. And so when I got there, I bought, obviously I'd got a large wine because you're like, I'm not going to go out again. <gasps> oh, get, no. Get myself a, a large red wine and I'm like, have to go. And the whole row is full. So I'm squeezing past everyone to get to this end seat by the wall. So I can't get out apart from going past everybody else. The person that's on the aisle has broken their leg. So I'm just not going out anyway. And honestly, it really <laughs> ruined the film for me because about 30 minutes in, I was in excruciating pain. I hadn't even finished the wine though in 30 minutes. I couldn't, I had to really sip it or just because I couldn't, I was in so so much pain and the way that they again do watch the film because it's brilliant if you haven't already but the way that they do it um and i hope i'm not ruining i've never read the book either oh Oh, come on it's a classic Um, it is a classic they they film it in um not in chronological order so it kind of goes back and forwards in time so there's no marker at all either to be like to Mm -hmm. know where you are in the film because I can't follow along knowing, okay, well, this is what happens in the book. So I know that I'm going to, I'm roughly towards the end of the film because it's chop, 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 chopping, chip, chopping. Chip, they did that on purpose. Whatever. Just because they knew that this little lady here would absolutely need to relieve herself 30 minutes into a movie because she drank a load of red wine. I didn't relieve myself <laughs> until the end. That made it sound like I did, but I didn't. I got to the end and then it was just really like, everybody needs to fucking move. Everybody get a scoot on, get outside. But you know what it's like at the end of a movie or the theatre? Everybody is waiting to go to the bathroom. Yeah. There's always a massive queue and there's like two bathrooms. Oh my God, yeah. Meanwhile, the men are like coming and going as they please, laughing at you. I don't want to, I'd rather just queue. (laughs) Well, obviously, but it's still... A, a bit frustrating. It can be, but then have you ever or oh, have you ever smelt a urinal? Oh yes, sadly. It's they smell why do they smell like that? I know it's I know it's urinal, but it's still a toilet. Surely it still gets cleaned. Well, I don't know if everybody always flushes a urinal. I don't know if you do flush a urinal. Well you can. But maybe some of them just don't have a flush on them. You should flush them. I don't know. I thought it was just a drain. No, I think that. Oh my god! Sorry, I, do have a, I can't. I this is really why. weird. Yeah, we're certainly not experts in this field, so I don't know why we're trying to fathom this mystery. To it's, <laughs> it's just thinking about disgusting. the smell of it. Yeah, just it's horrible. Me, oh my! Why does it smell like that? Anyway, what a way to end this episode. I just want to tell you for one for upstairs downstairs. <laughs> I've got. <laughs> First of all, why is Shamiroquai Space Cowboy on there? That must be for a different. Uh, no, no, that will be for Ultra Flash. No. Okay. okay yeah. Must be. Yeah. And then I've so far upstairs. I know this is upstairs downstairs because I've got this is this to everyone listening. This is how confusing this playlist is. I've got Pulp, <laughs> Common People, which I felt like was a brilliant choice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one. But then I've also got Nicki Minaj featuring Lil Wayne, Rich Sex, because that song makes me. <laughs> well, love that's so and much. it's essentially what it is. Yes, um, yeah. I mean, I just felt like the audacity to actually, because obviously there's a lot of songs about that, but to actually name your song that. And then there's about another rich one on sex, there. about sa- yeah. having sex when you're rich, or what's defining rich, rich sex versus yeah. poor sex. 
I think it's like a feeling of luxury. Right. <laughs> the sheets, the toys, the lingerie, mm. the outfits. The cash. The extensions. Oh, yeah. The nails. The. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, fair. And there's yeah. also a song I've put on here called Alien Pussy. <laughs> well, that must Which also is... be for Ultra Flesh. Yeah. It's You'd like a, da- a dance hall song. But the cover is a cat with loads of eyes on its head and it freaks me out so much. So, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to narrow this down. It's just so good. It's just all gold. Solid gold. It's terrible. Oh, Oh again, I just, something popped into my head and it's just gone. What were we talking about? Just thinking... Can't alien pussies? No. Oh, I almost had it. This must be really boring when people are just listening to me. <laughs> Can I remember what it is that popped into my head. Oh, this is, it's on the tip of my tongue. What is it? What could it be? I just don't know. What were we talking about? I, I need to write things down. No, I know. Or when when you listen back, maybe you'll remember for next time. But maybe you'll immediately forget again. <laughs> Who knows? Who bloody knows? Next week, I'm going to be hydrated. That's my goal, to get back to the level of hydration I was at before. Like, I'm so dehydrated, my lips are literally peeling. I haven't had a drink all week of, like, a consistently drank water. Oh, That's reminded me. <laughs> you, your what peeling lips reminded me. <laughs> I'm going, I'm getting my eyebrows, um... I waxed on on Saturday for the first time in ages because things have opened <laughs> up and I'm so excited. Oh, my God. So next I'm week, so... it'll be a different face. Oh, my God, it'll I haven't had my eyebrows set in a year. I didn't realise that. Every time it makes I get my such a difference. Done, it does, because I always start to think, like, I don't need my eyebrows done. I yeah, but then you have them done, you're like, oof. No, I should never not look like this. This is... This is what capitalism is really about. I look way better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Well, yeah, we should learn to feel like we look better. No. Without spending money. No. No, you- I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> the epitome of a narcissistic oh capitalist over there. No, I'm let me gonna- spend my money and look good. I'm going to grow up and be like, am I Ronald Ray? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. God forbid. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I really yeah. need to go because I need the loo and I can't stop drinking this Fanta. Oh, sugar. I forgot how good it is. <laughs> oh, God. I haven't had a full fat Fanta, Fanta? Mm. Ugh, Fanta in so long. We just had Fanta zero. No, I'd rather just not drink it, honestly. Fanta isn't a drink worth drinking if it hasn't got sugar in it, in my opinion. <laughs> I do. I like Pepsi Max. I liked Coke Zero for like the two weeks where I couldn't stop drinking it, but now I've remembered it's disgusting again. Or well, maybe like I was a brief addiction. I don't know to the to the fake sugar. But yeah, I like Pepsi Max. I like a full sugar Seven Up only in a can. And yeah, they're my drinks. And oh my god, I, I don't love think I ever, ever have ever had Seven Up in a can. It just feels like it's always a drink that you have in a like. Big old slushy buff, you know. A oh, like a two liter. Uh, not a two liter, but yeah. No, I mean to share. I don't mean like, you're like look, look. <laughs> that would be nice. That's so funny. Like yeah, something that you're getting at the cinema or like Pizza Hut or something. I don't, I I've like never it's... had it in a can. I was it's always a bright bright girl. Personally. Yeah, but there's always more, like especially at like family parties. There's, for some reason, there's always something oh, yeah. up available. I think it's just like a Nigerian drink. If, especially, I feel like if when I th- when I think about my youth, <laughs> when I think about being little, in and if I think I'm about six, Tottenham nineties seven up, like I can taste it. Also, who drank Tizer? They spent so much money trying to convince us to drink that. Who drank Tizer? Well, I mean, no uh, one. We, I've it had was it. Disgusting. Everyone's had it because there was always a time where, like, they put so much money into it that it'd be everywhere. It wasn't great, was it? And like, no, I didn't fizzy get Vimto. it. Oh, I mm. love fizzy Vimto. 
to this day. That's a real treat for me because you can hardly ever get it. Although they do have it at the corner shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I come to think about out. it, it's readily available online. <laughs> like everywhere. <laughs> like literally, it's 15 minutes away from this house. What am I talking about? You have it right now. <laughs> Probably got one in my fridge. <laughs> no, the only drink. No, there's no drinks in the fridge. I'm actually counting milk. <laughs> Which I do not. Yeah. I've started drinking like glasses of nut milk. It just doesn't. Oh, matter. why? Because the, the first few sips, I'm not gonna lie. Because basically, all I drink is water, and I'm so bored of it. And I'm and I'm bored of lemon water. Even like I'm really at the end of my tether with water, which is probably why I look. Water like this. needs to rebrand. Stat. <laughs> water is shaking in its boots. Shake. Oh my god! I People think I'm are just about this. sick of it. Sick of us. We need to. We need to rebrand. We need to be something else. Anybody got any ideas? Aww. Any bringing? No anybody shade. bringing anything new to the table? <laughs> what haven't we been? Oh. That's, that's how Tizer got invented. No thanks. <laughs> Tizer <laughs> comes along like. Stick it. <laughs> well, are you bored with water? Hello. I just want to know if the person who really made that drinking tasted it. I just want to know, did you really, really think that was going to take off? I shouldn't be mean. I they didn't I'm care. <laughs> they didn't care. It didn't matter. Okay, I really have to go to the loo because I cannot stop drinking this. This is delicious. It's never ending as well. It's like Thor's <laughs> meat, cup of horn of mead. <laughs> it's never never going down it's like spaghetti bolognese in a restaurant oh you're never God, finishing it you're never finishing it. oh I don't know about you but me I, I've ne- it just never the bowl no they do give you an oxy portion yeah. compared to the other portions of any other meal yeah it's not so an elegant this? portion it's just like here's here's a that of spaghetti bolognese good luck eating that good luck seeing the bottom of that plate oh my god oh i can't wait to go out and eat pasta wow i'm basic doesn't yeah it's not the same when you have to boil it yourself like i don't cook and eat pasta all the time i still i'm like no but i want to do it outside i want to pay you know what i mean five times as much I do, I and I want them to be a waiter who I think is rude, but I still want them to like me, and I'm just not, never going to let them know. Anyway, I need to go. <laughs> Fair enough. But, guys, it's been real, and, yeah. As always. See you next week. Oh, wow. What was that? Vision. Oh, my God, I cannot wait. I might watch a few episodes again. I know. I'll re-watch it all, all before next week. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Wait. Rewind the tape.